Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you're in New York City. How is life in New York right now? Yeah, well, I'm on my way to a, a 2 p.m. meeting uh, for my women's clothing line. So we have <gasps> Naughty by Nature women's clothing coming. <laughs> so I'm excited because I'm going to look at all of the samples that were developed. I'm working with a very talented, uh, experienced female designer in the, in the urban, you know, uh, apparel world. So mm. I'm in for a big day today. <laughs> I am so excited for this because I was noticing all the cool stuff in the, uh, like on the mixtape tour that you guys had for merch. And like, yes, yes. I've, I was going to ask you about doing like the eighties baby video and the house party video. And I love like the bed sheets and everything you guys have going on. So, so what was that whole mixtape tour experience like for you? Oh man, that was incredible. You know, Donnie Wahlberg, he's the Don, he's the man. We've been rocking out with the Wahlbergs since the early 90s. I remember uh, we toured with them in London, New Kids on the Block, and Mark Wahlberg was with them when he was just starting his career as Marky Mark. And as a matter of fact, we were friends with Mark Wahlberg before we were friends with Donnie. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fast forward to about 2010, Donnie called us out for uh, Radio City Music Hall. It mm. was us, Backstreet Boys, and New Kids on the Block. He wanted to surprise his fans. And uh, we came out, and, man, we showed up with Naughty Kids on the Block t-shirts because we <laughs> thought it would be a great idea to combine both bands, you know, names and logos. So that first time we engaged them in Radio City Music Hall, mm -hmm. we showed up with Naughty Kids on the Block t-shirts so we like let's take our naughty in our font and their kids on the block in their font combine them surprise them with t-shirts and you know we've been rocking out ever since so it's literally taken since 2010 all the way to 2019 for us to tour together so the mixtape tour was a long time coming and man we had the time of our lives out there Oh, I can't even imagine. Plus, you were like hip hop icons with as well as Salt and Peppa, you know, together as well. Like, what's your relationship with those guys like? Well, you know, uh, Tretch and Peppa were married. They have a beautiful daughter, Egypt. So yeah. we're literal family, you know, Naughty yeah. by Nature and Salt and Peppa. So, you know, to combine all of these acts on a uh, mixtape tour, New Kids on the Block, Salt and Peppa, Tiffany and Debbie Gibson, it was a hip pop powerhouse out there so it was amazing <laughs> i wish i could have i want one of those t-shirts wow the naughty kids on the blog t-shirts yeah and you know what we're working on it because donnie wore one every night and you know it's legal stuff and licensing to get that stuff cleared we've yeah. been working on that forever too but you know eventually it'll, it'll happen and it'll be for sale for everyone it looked like you had a really cool photo booth for backstage too. You guys had one that was set up that was really unique looking. Yeah, well, Donnie, uh, New Kids had that photo booth set up for their meet and greet situation. We actually had this slugger lounge. So yeah. I know, thanks to everyone who came out for the slugger lounge, man. We had the big blow up chair and we had Slugger, our mascot, out there with us. And, man, we, we had the time of our lives. That was, like, the first time in our 29-year career that we had a meet-and-greet experience like that. So we just put it together. You know, Donnie supported us every step of the way, making sure we had what we needed and the space that we needed for every venue. And, you know, our meet-and-greet literally started with, about 10, 15 people. But by the time we pushed through 55 dates, we were like at full capacity, over 100 people coming to our meet and greet. So it was crazy. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. That sounds like it was an amazing tour. Um, and now I understand that East Orange, New Jersey is home. It's your home base, right? Um, what makes it special there? Are you still there um, in Jersey? And what was your neighborhood like growing up? Yes, yeah, so um, <clears throat> Naughty by Nature, all three of us are originally from our hometown of East Orange, New Jersey. You know, we were kids growing up, um, elementary, middle school, and high school, and we put together the band uh, initially in high school. So, you know, that was very important to us because it was our classmates, it was all of our hometown who supported us, and we were actually a group called The New Style at first, and... Uh, you know, we signed a record deal that didn't work out, 
but good thing that we had Queen Latifah around the way. She's also from East Orange. And we ran yeah. across Latifah. She just so happened to be starting her uh, management company, Flavor Unit Management. So Naughty by Nature was the first group signed to Flavor Unit Management. And, man, I mean, we had Naughty by Nature from East Orange, Queen Latifah from East Orange, Flavor Unit, you know, representing the East Orange, Irvington, North area. So it was a powerhouse. And we had so much fun and so much support from our city, the town and everything. And fast forward, you know, we all moved out of East Orange, but five years ago, I moved back because I'm working with the mayor and city council and, you know, just rolling up my sleeves and investing back in our hometown and, and just encouraging others to come back home and invest in our hometown. It's good to take all the things that you've been able to do and uh, show that love back to your hometown. Absolutely. And are you, what, what are some of the places you recommend people to go visit in East Orange when they come by? Well, first and foremost, um, the parks. We have great parks. And actually, I was on the mayor's transition team. So I was on Recreation and Cultural Affairs Committee. So I concentrated on the parks. We have an awesome skate park. So any bikers, any roller skaters, skateboarders, come visit our skate park uh, in East Orange. We have tons of food. So we have a very uh, diverse mix of people there from Latin foods to Caribbean food to uh, Oh, nice. Food. So come check out our food. Oh, my goodness, it's the best. And, uh, you know, it's just a good vibe with good people around the way. Oh, that feels good, just hearing about it, you know? Um, yes, that's amazing. Yes, yes. It's amazing. Um, from all the music you put out over the last 29 years, which album track do you wish had been a single? Hmm. I'm going to give a clip of it on the show so everyone gets a chance to check it out too. Well, you know what? We have a song called Wickedest Man Alive off our first album. It was actually the B-side of our first single, OPP. So Wickedest Man Alive features Queen Latifah. And that record was so important to us because it was the first single we put out and OPP totally blew up. And as a matter of fact, when we sent out that single, you know, back in those days, you had an A side and a B side. Most DJs were playing that B side, Wickedest Man Alive featuring oh. Queen Latifah. So once the label, you know, focused and said, hey, guys, this is the single, the A side, OPP, that blew up. But we never really got a chance to celebrate how great that record was. So Wickedest Man Alive is the single and video I wish we promoted and shot. All right, I'm going to share it with everybody. I mean, when the OPP was blowing up, everything was probably really overwhelming. I can only imagine what you felt like when you got that big hit. Are you able to take it all in while it's happening? Or is this kind of like something that you look back on now and you're able to embrace it? I know. It's like while you're pursuing everything, you know, again, coming out of high school, we were a group called the New Style, and that didn't work out. So, mm -hmm. you know, and the people around the way doubted us, oh, you'll never make it. And then once we got with Flavor Unit, we had to change our name to Naughty by, by Nature. So we were so focused on proving people wrong and making this thing happen that when OPP blew up in the first two, three albums, we were just running and you never get a chance to like look and see what's going on. And for us, you know, honestly, we've been so blessed that since 91, we haven't stopped. I mean, mm -hmm. we haven't stopped. So this COVID situation, unfortunately and fortunately it happened because it gives us a chance to sit down and say, wow, you know, be calm for a minute and then just assess everything that's happened. And we're yeah. like, wow, what a ride. And here we are approaching our 30th anniversary in 2021. And we're like, man, we've been through a lot and we're so blessed. And, you know, sometimes you don't get a chance to realize it. How have you been able to focus your creativity during the COVID situation? Well, for us, it's been great because um, we've been touring, you know, nonstop ever since 91. And throughout the years, it's been difficult to focus on the studio. So mm -hmm. now that COVID's happened and no one can really go anywhere and you're really locked down, now we get to focus back on the studio work and go back to the basics. So we're actually doing that right now. And creative-wise, I mean, 
there's so many creative things to do. I mean, look at all of the Zoom calls that's happening. We exactly. did a very creative uh, song and video with Donnie Wahlberg and New Kids on the Block called House Party. So I love everyone that. actually recorded their parts on their cell phones and mm -hmm. sent it in and they edited it up, chopped it all up. You know, so there was the creativity has been at a premium. Like I said, mm. I'm on my way over here to look at my female clothing line. Our male line is doing incredible. So, yeah, it gives you a chance to double down on creativity. So Source Magazine called OPP one of the 100 greatest rap songs of all time and the 20th best single of the 90s by Spin Magazine. What kind of legacy do you hope this song leaves? And is it still as fun for you now to perform it as it was then? Does it get tiring or no no it, it definitely doesn't get tiring you know opp is our baby it's the gift that keeps on giving yeah. and unlike you know a lot of artists and horror stories you hear in the industry they kind of resent their classic work because for one they never got paid properly for it so mm -hmm. we were blessed to have queen latifah great lawyers we were rightfully compensated so Every time we celebrate that song, every time it's sampled or used in a movie, we're properly compensated. So we're proud of the song. It's our baby. And performing it, it's like performing it for the first time because we do have a mix of our core fans, but we mm -hmm. definitely have a lot of younger fans come out and see us play for their first time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they get to say, yeah, you know me. So it's like introducing a classic song to a new audience. And that's what really keeps it fresh for us. Oh, it's got to be great seeing the kids doing it and, and just go, going and giving her like, I can only exactly. imagine. What's one of your most memorable performances that you ever did? You know, I think I always say it's like um, in Rhode Island. I remember when we first came out, you know, we were touring, we were doing like two, three shows a day. So we were all over the place and we were red hot. And this is back when Tretch had braids. So mm. I swore I witnessed this. We went on stage at an arena in Rhode Island. And when Tretch came on stage, you know, I'm the sidekick. So I'm looking at him from the side. The crowd roared so much. I swear I just saw his braids blow backwards, you know, <laughs> like in a cartoon. I'm like, wow. Is this I, real life? Just, yeah, yeah. I'm like, wow. I'm like, I know that didn't happen or it wasn't a, a, a fan like the Beyonce or Celine Dion fan going, but <laughs> it, perhaps it was. It was just so much energy. I saw the braids blowing back. So that's one of my <laughs> vivid memories. <laughs> I love that one. That's great. Um, what uh, can the youth of today learn from the hip hop of the 90s? Does it feel like the hip hop community is still as vibrant as it was? Or is there anything missing? Well, I think um, the 80s and the 90s, there was a lot of uniqueness in hip hop. So mm -hmm. no one sounded the same. No one looked the same. No one really dressed the same. Everyone mm -hmm. had their own unique style. And it, as far as producers and the music and the beats, everyone had their own style and flavor, as opposed to today, you know, this, whatever they're doing today, it's like the same beat over the same 1000 songs. So, yeah. you know, kids could look at what we did and the subject matter was different and diverse. So I would, you know, challenge the kids to dig into yourself and of course be inspired by others, but Find a different lane, find a different path, find different subject matter, and that's going to help you stand out. You guys were absolute pioneers, trailblazers in hip hop. So you were the, also the first artist to win Best Rap Album, the Grammy. So how did you celebrate? And was the Grammy like, like an achievement that was like a pinnacle to you? Yes, I mean, hey, the Grammy is like winning the Super Bowl of music, you know? Yeah. And that was a great accomplishment for us. Unfortunately, back then, you know, the Grammys didn't really respect hip-hop music. Mm -hmm. And during their ceremonies, they never televised the category. And, you know, actually, when we learned we won, we knew we were nominated. But going to the Grammy event, we found out we won while we were doing the red carpet before we even got in the venue. And then oh, wow. our, our award 
um, that category was just like a sidebar to the entire ceremony. So it wasn't even a part of the ceremony. Mm -hmm. And when we got inside the venue, we just kind of went into the arena or the auditorium. And I just remember screaming in there, ah! <laughs> just saying, we won. And then we walked out and continued to impress, but we never even went inside the ceremony. Thank goodness. I feel that um, they're giving so much more respect now, but it took a lot of years, a lot of years. Yes, yes. I mean, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have guys like um, Jimmy Jam on the uh, Grammy board now. And yeah. MC Light does a lot of work with them now. So, you know, things evolve, things change, and you got to break down doors and break down barriers. So that's what it's all about. Did you get involved with using the internet in its early stages in your career when it came out? Do you think that the oh, internet... Yes. Yeah? Yes. As a matter of fact, I, I've always known the power and respected the power of the internet. As a matter of fact, um, our first website we had up uh, was in 94, uh, naughtybynature.com. And I remember the fastest modem being 14.4, uh, 14.4 kilobits yep. per, per second, you know? Then they went to the 28.8 modems and the 56K modems totally. and the C1 lines and all of that. So. I was out there since then, and I always knew that like, when they explained to me World Wide Web dot your address, you know, so www.naughtybynature.com, mm -hmm. then I looked at the monitor and the computer, I'm like, wow, you know what, everyone gets to have their own TV station, you know, yeah. and if you're able to use this, it's literally a worldwide TV station where you get to go direct to fans, so I was on it from day one. And at the time, we didn't have social media. We had message boards. So yep. I remember, you know, we had the website. We had message boards. Fans would find us there, post on the message board, and that's how we replied and engaged our fans back then. Mm -hmm. And then the entire thing evolved. So we've been on it since, since then. You're one of the first people I've spoken with that actually embraced all that very early, you know, and I think that was very important for your career. And uh, it's funny because I remember seeing the first time uh, like a bulletin board system where you dial in and you download a picture and you slowly watch it line by line coming down and you're like, holy shit, wow, <laughs> you know? Those were yeah, and you know what? And for us, you know, mouse pads were big back then. So mm. when we launched our site and we put it out there, we had about maybe about 300 mouse pads and we said, hey, if you send us your email address or contact us on the message board, we'll send you a free mouse pad. So we definitely sent out tons of mouse pads. And just recently, someone tagged us in a picture and like, this is the mouse pad I had from like 95 or 94. <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> That's so great. What hard lessons have you learned throughout your career that helped shape who you are today? Um, I think that throughout the years, personally, myself, I could have been a lot more selfish, mm -hmm. you know, take care of myself a little more and kind of tuck away a few more things for myself. It's not really a regret, but I, I could have stashed a little more for myself, but, mm. you know, I can't help myself because I realize I'm a giving person. And for me to have everything and people have nothing, I don't like that. I'm more yeah. of a giver, a sharer. I'm more what people would call a socialist. Just spread the love, spread the wealth, and let everyone live together greatly. And as opposed to just someone has to be on some pedestal and everyone else has nothing. And, you know, you're just giving out or, or dangling a carrot in front of people. I don't like that. We need more people who think the way you do in this world because yes. it would be a better place, honestly. Um, tell me about yes, the latest. Greed, greed, is, greed is ripping this entire planet apart. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, how can some people have so much and some have so little? It's just unreal to think about. But yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you have that giving heart and don't ever change that. <laughs> yes, you... I won't. Not at all. Did you ever spend much time visiting Canada? That's where I'm talking to you from, by the way. I'm in Western yes. Canada. Yes, I, I realized that. Um, yeah. Yes, Canada was one of our 
first markets. Um, we remember much music up there and all of the radio um, record stores and stuff and Toronto and then the OPP, Ontario Provincial Police, oh, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, so we, and we remember going up there in the 90s. We went to a mall and there was a literal, you know, the quintessential red hot artists riot in the mall we went to the mall mm. those kids ransacked the whole mall trying to get to us and we had to get escorted out by the police and man <laughs> you know, canada has been great for us then we've you know toured coast to coast all the way um from nanaimo all the way through you know uh, nice. it, it's been crazy out there crazy nice Nice. Yeah, I'm out in Edmonton. So I know there's a lot of tours that we do get to come through. So hopefully when things go back to normal, we'll get a Naughty by Nature show here. I can't wait. Yes, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what food, clothing item, toy, etc. What makes you nostalgic for the 90s when you see it again or you think about it? Um, I think of a lot of TV shows like Martin, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, yeah. Friends. You know, yeah. uh, Queen Latifah for show, sure, Living Single. Mm. I think fashion, I think of like Fat Farm and uh, mm. uh, Cross Colors and, and you oh, know. I love those jackets. Like They're so great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think of like boxing, like Mike Tyson and Michael Jordan and all of those guys. And uh, food wise, mm. hmm. <laughs> Not sure. I, I like Caribbean food, so that always mm. it never goes out of style. <laughs> That's, no, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. all right. So tell me about the latest music and what goals are lying ahead for you and Naughty by Nature. Yeah, so the latest music is uh, Naughty by Nature. We're in the studio now. We're mm. prepping for our 30th anniversary coming up in 2021. Nice. So lots of great new music coming up. And then KG and I have this Ill Town Sluggers project. So I know a lot of people have been seeing us, especially if you were on the New Kids on the Block tour. So the Ill Town Sluggers, uh, it's a DJ and hype set. We opened up the, um, the New Kids on the Block mixtape tour last year. Mm -hmm. So we did a 20 minute opening DJ hype set. And now, and you know, that goes along with that. We have a record label, Slugger Music. So we have an artist, Nicole Michelle. She's out of the uh, New England area. We have a guy, Ryan Lane. He has an incredible R&B song called Forever. That's out banging, doing very well on the streaming services. And just, you know, we're going to create a platform to just keep putting out new, talented, hungry artists. And then us on the naughty side, you know, we're going to keep doing the legacy thing, the legacy music, and keep, keep doing it for the culture, as they say. It's an absolute pleasure talking with you today, Vin Rock. And thank you for taking the time for me and Dope Nostalgia. I'll give you guys a tag and I'll email when uh, the show's going to be coming out so that you guys, if you, want, if you want to share it on social media, that'd be sweet. Yes, absolutely. We will share it. And thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure, man. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Good luck with the new clothing line. I can't wait to see it. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. All right. You take care. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.